Hey, welcome back to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your drone footage from looking like this to like this. That's right, we're talking about how I color grade all my drone footage. Stick around to the end because I will share some key insights that I feel are important when it comes to color grading anything. So let's head over to the workstation. All the images I'm about to show you were shot on the Mavic 2 Pro in D-Log. I love shooting in D-Log because it gives you a ton of flexibility to really get the image you want. I'm not a big fan in shooting in just the standard color profile. Uh, it's just, there's just too much contrast, right? For me, just too much. The brights are bright, the darks are dark, and I like there to be a little bit more roll off, a little bit easier of a transition between my highlights, my shadows, um, yeah, so I just really like shooting D-Log. So the very first thing you need to do if you're shooting on the Mavic 2 Pro is get the conversion LUT from DJI. It's free, it's your D-Log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. It's gonna be the base of all our grades. Uh, so that can be found on the DJI website. I'll link it down below, click that link, scroll all the way to the bottom and you can choose whether you're on a Mac or a Windows. Obviously we're editing in Final Cut Pro right now. So uh, I'm gonna download the one for a Mac. Well, I've already downloaded it. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro. So here are the clips we're gonna be working with. This is a orbital shot of the cliffs over in Torrey Pines. And then we also have a shot of a home on. I did for a real estate video about a week ago. I would love to show you guys more examples, uh, but the process is basically the same and it would make for a very, very long video. So we're gonna work with these two clips. So the very first thing I like to do because I want as much real estate on my screen as possible is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click this uh, hide browser tab so we don't see any of the clips here on the left. And we're gonna hit command seven to bring up our scopes. We wanna be working with the waveform. So if that doesn't pop up when you hit command seven, click under view, there's this little icon and you can choose waveform as the clips you wanna say see and make sure it's RGB overlay. So once we have our scope, our image, we need to apply our conversion LUT. The very first thing we need to do. So we need to go over to our effects panel. We're gonna type in LUT and drag that on to our first clip. Now, if you haven't loaded the LUT yet into Final Cut Pro, you just click where it says none for the LUT because we don't have one selected. You can go down to choose custom LUT and then just pull up on your computer wherever you have that LUT saved. So I already have it loaded up into Final Cut Pro. So I will select the D-Log M to Rec. 709 LUT. That's the free one you can download from the DJI website. I have quite a few different ones that you gotta pay for, but we're gonna work with the free stuff right now. So we'll select that and bam, look at that. Our image already looks really good. So here's the first tip. Let's work well if you shoot the image properly. So the best way I have found to expose and shoot D-Log images is to be a third to two thirds overexposed. That means down below at the bottom of your controller, if you're on the iPhone, it'll show your, if you're overexposed, you wanna see a 0.3 to 0.7. Try not to go over 0.7. Uh, if you go to a full stop overexposed, you can still work with that. You gotta bring down a lot of the highlights. Uh, but I like to be that 0.3 to 0.7. It just gives you a very balanced image uh, between the shadows and the highlights. It looks really nice. And that, as you can see, when you apply the LUT, it already looks super good. And a lot of people would stop here, but we're color grading. We're gonna get this image to a, a really good Rec. 709 spot. So let's start with that. We're going to go over to our color panel and we're gonna add a color wheel. So there's our first color wheel. The very first thing I like to do is add a little bit more saturation because I like my images really to pop. So there we go. And as you can see over here on the scopes, now our red channel is starting to clip in the shadows, but that's okay. We're going to address that later. The next thing, this is super important and this will add a lot of depth to your image, a lot of texture, is go over to the midtones and drop those midtones down. And as you can see, you know, we were here, the image is a little flat, a little bright, we bring it down and we start to see some texture come back and it really looks more realistic. And that's what we want. We want to get to a good realistic point and then you can apply your stylistic uh, 
options, but I really like trying to get my images to look as natural as possible. So we're already good there. I'm gonna drag up the highlights slightly. There we go. And that's it right now for my first color wheel. I'm going to add a second color wheel and we're gonna go up here to our masks and add a color mask because I always like to bright, I like to saturate my skies a little bit more and darken them a little bit so the blues really pop. So we're going to select the blue in the sky for our color mask and there we go. This is really gonna to help too because if you look at this image, uh, it's a little hazy uh, off in the distance and by darkening it up a little bit, we're really gonna add a little bit more clarity. So first, a little saturation to our blues and then because we're only affecting the blue in the sky, I'm actually just going to drag the global exposure down a little bit to about right, right there. So before, after, before, after. And as you can see, those hills are a little bit more clearer in the background now. Now I want to address the ocean. It's a little dark, just slightly for my taste. So we're going to add another color wheel and another color mask. And we're going to, oh, that is a, uh, yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> that that was a, a shape mask. We want a color mask. All right, and we're gonna select the ocean. And we're just gonna keep dragging until we get enough of the ocean selected that we want. That's pretty good. And again, I like a little bit more saturation. So we're gonna add a little, just a little bit of saturation. That's my next key tip is a little bit goes a long way. Don't overdo it. Just go slightly, look at your scopes, but also rely, rely on your eyes and see how it looks. Now we're gonna drag, we're gonna drag up the mid-tone slightly. And there we go. That was just a little bit. Now look at before, after, before, after. Just a little bit brighter, a little bit more saturated, and it looks really good. Now let's address the clipping in the red channel down here. So we're gonna add a color curve. And because it's in the shadows, we're just gonna click, we're gonna click towards the bottom, maybe just halfway up between that first point. Actually, let's just add a point there and then we'll add another point right in between. And we're going to just take that, that bottom point down here in the shadows, drag those up ever so slightly. And now our reds aren't, aren't clipping before, after. And because that brightened up the image ever so slightly, we're gonna go back to our first color wheel, drag our shadows down slightly and our mid-tone slightly. And there we go. One last thing I like to do is go back down here to effects in the search bar, type sharp, so we can find our sharpen and add a little bit of sharpening. D-Log is a little soft for me. Um, so sharpening, we're gonna just dial that back down to one on the intensity and there's our image. So before, this is what we were working with and after, this is what we have now. This is a very good natural looking image for a Rec. 709 image. After that, um, you can go ahead and stylize it a little bit if you want. Uh, what I like to do is it really depends on what this image is being used for. So what I'll do is I'll go over to uh, my, what is this? My titles and generators tab and go to adjustments. Uh, this is something you have to download. I'll, I'll link it down below. It's free. I'll go to my look grade, drag that down, drag another custom LUT. onto that and then you can uh, you can choose a LUT that works for you. Now the very very important thing to note here is when you add a LUT, I'm going to use these LUTs I have from Leela from YouTube or she likes to be called just Leela. Um, I like the that cool kid LUT. I don't make my own because there's already a bunch of great ones out there. But as you can see here, when you apply a LUT, it's very intense, but you can drag the mix down to where it looks, it looks good. So about just 0.3, 30% intensity on that LUT. Here's the, here's the before, here's the after. Ever so slightly, a little bit goes a long way to have a good image. And 
yeah, I would use that in a video in a heartbeat. Now we're gonna get rid of that look grade real quick. If you are going to use this image for stock footage, this might be a little intense. This is a good finish Rec 709, but if you're doing stock footage, you want to go ahead and make sure it's not overly saturated. Uh, so I would just go down to, to that first wheel and drag the saturation back down if you were gonna use this for stock photos, just ever so slightly. So there's more play for whoever buys this off stock, but we're gonna, we're gonna take that back. So there we go. That's a lot, right? But it's not at the same time. It's ever, ever so slightly. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot goes a, a long way. So our second image here, now we know we're gonna add that custom LUT and we're gonna apply our conversion LUT And that image is a little overexposed. I may have overexposed this one. I shot slightly, but we can fix it. So this is a good example to show what happens if you overexpose. I may have been a full stop overexposed here. So again, a little bit of saturation. And then we're going to drag down the highlights a little bit, up the shadows. But we see here, if we look over at the waveform, we still have a bunch just, you can kind of see how the mid-tones are a little bit more crowded. And we're gonna drag that down. You always wanna drag down your mid-tones uh, a little bit, in my opinion. It just really gives a lot of depth to your image and makes it a little bit more realistic. So watch what happens here. I drag down those mid-tones and that just looks so much better. So before the color wheels, after the color wheels. Um, that. That looks really good. It's just that simple, guys. Again, I'm gonna add another color wheel because I want my sky to pop a little bit more. We're gonna add a color mask and select just the blues. We don't want all the clouds selected, just the blues. Saturation, we're gonna up that a little bit. I'm gonna drag down my global exposure because it's affecting just the blues and look at that sky now. Before, after before, after, and we can really start to see the clouds in the sky and it all just doesn't blend together. Um, another free download that, uh, I think it's free. I'll link it down below. Um, it's from, who's it from? Film Poets. And this is your Mavic 2 distortion because uh, the Mavic 2 Pro has a little bit of distortion. But this is, you just drag this on top and watch. Straightens out those lines. Check this out. Let me go back and turn that off. So this is before we added that distortion correction, after, that just looks a lot better. And honestly, this image is done. All we did was add the conversion LUT, we made some adjustments in our color wheels, we brought, because it was overexposed, we brought the highlights down slightly, and then we brought those midtones down. Always drop those midtones a little bit, gives your image feel. When, you, when it's color grading though, make sure you're doing just, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way, you guys. So there are our images. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching me color grade my D-Log to Rec. 709 images to really make them pop and make them look as natural as possible. So again, the key takeaways, a little bit goes a long way and make sure you drag down those mid-tones a little bit. It's gonna give your images a lot of depth and make them feel just more realistic. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when future videos come out and I will see you guys in the next one.